kids, welcome to kids class. So make sure to turn off the distractions around you and grab your Bibles and be ready to turn to the passages of scripture. And um, so let's just have a good time together. Let's go ahead and pray, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for these kids. I pray you bless as we do kids class, Lord, that the kids would be encouraged and excited and blessed, Lord, as they um, worship you today. Lord, help them, God, to put their whole hearts into the songs and that their ears would be open to listening and that their heart would apply, Lord, what they hear today, oh God. And please use those who are at home, Lord, to still give to missions, to still make sure, Lord, to give of their tithes, Lord, to God, to you, Lord. You are so worthy of it. You're so good to us. Lord, thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. And, Lord, to be buried in a tomb and rise again the third day, Jesus, and to give us the hope of eternal life. All we have to simply do is believe and receive you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. It's a gift, Lord, and we are thankful for it. I pray you bless this time, Lord, and all these things I ask. And everyone say it in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so before we get started with our songs, go ahead and check out some of the pictures and the video of me getting a pie smashed in my face. Now keep in mind that as soon as a pie was smashed in my face, that's not even the worst part. The worst part was the silly string. It got all over me. The thing, it was disgusting. I hated the smell of that silly string. I should have smelled it before I let the kids douse me in it. But then again, I may have backed out of it. So. Um, I let all the kids participate just simply because um, they uh, were all so faithful to participate and be part of it or even pray for it. And so I'm just so grateful for those who were able to participate and even those perhaps that were online as well as you prayed. Um, and so I just hope you enjoy the video and it brings some joy to your heart today, okay? Put so her face! Put her face! Put her face! Put the lid on the ground. Hey, Chuki, here. Two hands. Two hands. Two hands. Whenever you're just gonna put it in her face. Whenever you're ready. Walk up to her. Here, walk right here. Stand right here. Oh, you can smash it in my face right here. So stand close. And you can just smash it. Whenever you're ready, Chuki. You can smash it really hard. Okay. Well. Okay. This is it, people. I don't know about you, 
but there was some kids in that group of children who were enjoying themselves a little too much during that pie scenario. Um, some of them were jumping up and down. Some of them were getting really close to my face. Those kids, you guys, you guys are crazy. But at the same time, I love you so much and God has blessed me with you and I'm so grateful for you. But it was just really funny to see those who really, really enjoyed getting that pie in my face and watching those kids spray me like crazy. It was fun. I, it was so good guys. And so I hope that was just something that brought a smile to you. Um, and I hope it encouraged you as you watched it as, um, that happened to me. And so as we get started, don't forget that March is, we're, at, we're focusing on missions. So we're focusing on missionaries and us as a church giving to missionaries uh, across onto foreign land because some of us, God has called us to be right here where we're at to reach our valley with the gospel. And so what we do is what is we, we give of our tithes and our offerings to our church and to the Lord. And, um, and with anything we give, we give as unto the Lord, right? Because it's God who sees it. It's God who will bless us. And so we give of that tithes and the offerings to help support pastor, to help support our church, to pay for our rent and our water and all of that, to keep everything going. Um, and then, and then, you know, all of us are not called. God doesn't call all of us to go to across the world to preach the gospel. But there are people who say yes to the Lord, say yes to the calling on their lives to go across the world and preach the gospel. And so they need support. And so they gain that support, that money support and the prayer support from churches like us. So they come to different churches across the country and they show their ministry and what God's calling them to do. And then we as a church vote um, if we're going to take that on for, uh, we're gonna take that missionary on for support. And so um, it's really exciting because this month is we're focusing on missions because what our desire is, you guys, is to be able to raise more money for missionaries so that way we can give more to the missionaries we're already supporting. We've got Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Dan and Debbie Morris in Mexico. We have the Mears family that came from Fiji and now they're starting a church in Washington. Uh, we have multiple people. We've got the Matheny's uh, who are missionaries in Romania. Uh, we're going to be, sorry to cut it like that. I totally messed up. So I just went ahead and edited it. So we've got the Matheny's to Romania. And then we've also got Miss Brittany Shear, who's going to uh, Uganda, Africa. And so it's just really exciting. We know she's not going to Uganda. Sorry guys. She's going to South Africa. Okay. South Africa. Miss McKenzie is out of it. But so we've got more, but th there's more. So we have a list of missionaries that we're supporting. And our desire is there's so many people out there who need support that are asking. I mean, Pastor was saying he gets phone calls all the time for missionaries who are needing support and asking for support um, so that they can go to another land and tell, spread the gospel like we're spreading the gospel right here in our city. And I hope that even though you're staying home, you're finding ways to spread the gospel. Maybe you can share this link, this YouTube video with another friend from your public school or somebody out there that you can send it to or even send the message about pastor because on our YouTube channel, if you guys go to the very front of our YouTube channel, the very first page, it shows a, a video on how someone can know for sure that when they die, they're going to heaven to know for sure. And we know that that's through Jesus Christ. It's receiving his free gift of salvation. And so pastor has a video there. And so what you can do is ask your parents to help you send that video to those who do not know Jesus as their savior. And you can say, hey, I want you to know for sure where you're going when you die. Here's how you can know. And pastor gives a wonderful explanation through God's word how someone can ask Jesus in their heart and know for sure that heaven is their home. And so it's a wonderful ministry. And it's not just my job, guys. It's your job too. It's your job to get the gospel out there. Jesus says, go ye, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's every person out there. Okay. And so it is our job as a church family. It is not just my job. It is the job of us, an entire church family to spread the gospel. And so may I encourage you that when you do come back to in-person church services, that you get involved with our outreach program. And maybe you're really shy and maybe your parents are shy too. So what you could do is come and be trained and discipled. And you can go out as well to tell others about Jesus and how they can know for sure that heaven is their home. We need more laborers, guys. We need more people coming on Saturdays. 
to go and spread the gospel. We have people who come and we pray and then we go out and sometimes um, we knock doors, sometimes we just put the gospel tracts on the doors so that way we can leave that there for them to read later. Uh, it's just different. And so guys, I encourage you, I, I, I want you guys to know how important it is that we are faithful to spread the gospel as a church family, as you as children. I want and I pray and I desire that you guys know how important it is that we all get involved with the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing the good news of Jesus with others. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into our songs. But our focus this month is missions, and then we're going to focus on church next. All right, so let's go into our first song, and that is Who is the King of the Jungle? Actually, no, we're going to do I Will Make You Fishers of Men, okay? This is what Jesus said to his disciples, and guys, we need to be faithful to do this too, okay? I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me, if you follow me, if you follow me. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. And one way we can follow Jesus is to be in God's word, to obey God's word, and allow Jesus to make us fishers of men. And he does that in us and through us through the Holy Spirit. All right, who is the king of the jungle? Okay, here we go. Who is the king of the jungle? Who, who, who is the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who is the king of the universe? And who is the king of me? His name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. Yes, he is the king of me. He is the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Bubble, bubble, bubble. He is the king of the jungle. Hoo, hoo. He is the king of the sea. Bubble, bubble, bubble. He is the king of the universe. And he is the king of me. What's his name? Jesus. You say it loud and proud. All right. Oh, soldiers. Oh, soldiers. Repeat after me, okay? Grab your Bibles. Follow me. Grab your Bibles. Follow me. I'm the Lord's infantry. If I die in the combat zone, wrap me up and send me home. Lay my Bible across my chest. Tell my Lord I've done my best. Oh, soldiers. Oh, soldiers. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Now we have to do the Western style because it's, you, could you hear the accent? It was, it was kind of coming out, so now we have to do it, okay? All right, here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's posse, yeah! I'm in the Lord's posse, yeehaw. I'm in the Lord's posse, yeehaw. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's posse, yeehaw. Good job, guys. <laughs> Miss McKenzie enjoys the Western version a little too much. All right, the next song is I Am A Promise. So we're gonna get ready to sing that one next, all right? So I am a promise. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. And I am learning to hear God's voice and I am trying to make the right choices. I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Well, I can go anywhere that he wants me to go, and I can be anything that he wants me to be. I can climb the high mountains, I can cross the wide seas. I am a great big promise, you see. 
I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. And I am learning to hear God's voice and I am trying to make the right choices. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Well, I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Yeah, just like that. You guys can look up potentiality and look up all those words and find out what they mean and what you are, okay? Luke 15, 10 is our memory verse. So go ahead and repeat after me, okay? Luke 15, 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Luke 15, 10. Let's do it again. Luke 15, 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Luke 15, 10. I'm going to say it all together now. Luke 15, 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner, one sinner that repenteth. Luke 15, 10. Someone who is a sinner, okay, we're all born sinners, right? But when we, when we turn, when we repent, when we turn from our sin and we turn to Christ and ask him to save us, in that very moment, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. It's an exciting day in heaven when that one soul says yes to Jesus. How important it is, guys. That one soul is so important to God, and that soul needs to be important to us too. That's why we keep our doors open. That's why we go out, because it is important that people know where they're going when they die. Because this world is lost and dying, and what they need is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ alone. All right? Uh, it is finished. It's something we'll be practicing, because I hope to Lord willing seeing this someday in church with the children's choir. But for now, we're going to practice the chorus, okay? And so it goes like this. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. Let's do it again, okay? It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. It is finished, and Jesus is Lord. And we'll, call, we'll go into that a little bit more and practice a little bit more. Let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to get started with our Bible lesson for today, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask and pray that you'd help these children to really understand the importance of giving and how they will be so blessed, Lord, if they give. And I pray that wouldn't be the reason they give. I pray they would give out of their hearts of love to you, Lord. Um, knowing, God, that it's what you call us to do. And because they love you, I pray they would obey you. Please, Lord, I pray that we all would. In Jesus' name I pray. Can everyone say it? Amen. All right, so the first verse is this. Luke 6, chapter 6. So if you want to turn in your Bible, so Luke chapter 6, verse 38. So you can pause this if you want, but Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And this is what it says. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. So basically, the same measure, the same amount of whatever it is you give, okay, whether it be your time, your love for others, your love for God, whether it be the money that God calls you to give, okay, commands us to give of our 10% of what we, what we earn, because that is a blessing from God. We know that God can give and God can take away. And so our jobs are from the Lord. Our allowances are from the Lord. The money you have is from the Lord. He can take it away if he wants to. So it's a blessing from the Lord. And when the blessings aren't there of the money, we can always pray and ask the Lord to help supply our needs. Because sometimes there are times in life where the money runs short. And we have to ask the Lord to 
to provide and we just have to ask, we just have to trust God and ask God to help us with our in our time of need and even in our time of blessings we need to be faithful to know that those blessings are from the Lord okay and so it's so it's so amazing to think that the same measure that you give of your time of your money whatever it is it will be measured to you again and guys I'm telling you when you live a life of ministry a life of giving to others it just pours back in like God finds different ways God does things in such beautiful ways maybe I may not get like let's just say God puts it on my heart to give a certain amount to many to, to missions or to tithe or whatever um, I may not get that money back in the way of how I gave it but maybe there was something else I had been praying about that God blesses me with or gives to me or maybe the better yet it's a reward in heaven that will never pass away because guys so many of us want our rewards now but really this life is gonna fly by and guys we should want to store up our rewards in heaven where dust and moth won't corrupt the things that we have up there and so God promises rewards a mansion and just beauty beyond compare that's in heaven and and ultimately the beauty of our Lord and just to think of what's gonna surround his throne and that beautiful huge rainbow that's gonna surround his throne it's just so beautiful it's so exciting and so another verse I want to share with you of what Jesus says and that's Matthew 6 1 take heed that ye you do not your alms okay the alms giving before men okay to be seen of them don't give in front of men so you can be seen of men okay otherwise ye have no reward of your father which is in heaven so Jesus says that if you're giving to show off to others then you have no reward in heaven waiting for you from your Heavenly Father I don't know about you but I want God's blessing over the blessing of being seen by others so guys may I encourage you maybe do something for the Lord this week that may be for others like maybe secretly clean something for your parents or um, or, or maybe put a little note but don't say who it's from on someone's desk and just say hey I'm thinking about you I'm praying about you I'm praying for you or whatever it may be but don't do things to be seen of others do it because God sees you now it's okay that sometimes sometimes people do see us when we're doing things for God so don't get that mixed up don't think that you <laughs> don't worry like if you're doing something for the Lord and someone sees you do it and you're not doing it for them you're doing it for God God will still bless you that's not the point of this message or what Jesus is saying but Jesus knows the heart of the religious people in that day and time and he knows the religious heart of some people in this day and time because and you know what in our flesh we want recognition we're like oh, I did a good job I want someone to tell me I did a good job you know but sometimes we get that that way with ourselves but we need to be faithful and just allow God to remove that pride from us because guys we want to be noticed we want people to see what we're doing but when we do things for God when we love God and we have that right relationship with God and we confess that sin and we get it out of our lives that pride it's amazing what God can do with a person and truly I'm, I'm serious when you truly love God and you just desire to do it for him then you truly you really won't care who saw you you really won't because it will be for him and it'll be for the right reason and so just be faithful that when you give you're not giving to show off to others okay make sure to have the right heart because God sees your heart and then the last verse is Acts 20 verse 35 and it says I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive and I can tell you guys from experience that it's such a blessing to give than to receive it really is when someone gives to you sometimes you feel like oh I need to give something back you know but that's not the that's not the point like you receive it and be thankful for it don't try and give back in the same way that person gave to you but ask the Lord Lord how would you have me to bless this person or how would you have me be a blessing to this family God how much of my money would you have me to give to missions every month maybe God's putting a number on your heart maybe God wants you to give one dollar to missions every single month one dollar to missions or maybe he's asking you to give five dollars to missions I don't know what it is but whatever it is be faithful to obey be faithful to obey be faithful that when you when God when you are blessed from God with your allowance perhaps your parents give you a dollar or five dollars 
make sure to give 10% of your tithe and make sure to read the devotional book because Miss Justina did a wonderful job making sure and explaining giving and how the importance of giving, giving to our missionaries, to our evangelists when they come and preach or we're having another exciting thing is we're having a singer come sing. And so make sure to tune into our live streams for the main church services so you can hear Brother Mark Gray sing tomorrow. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beautiful. Actually, you'll be watching it today because today is today um, or tomorrow. So I'm getting myself confused, guys. But just remember that we are to labor and to support the weak, to encourage others. And um, the, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And it's truly the case, guys. And just know that if you are giving, and maybe you feel like nobody did notice, but you do feel kind of discouraged. And sometimes you may wonder if God sees. God does see. And God will bless you. You just have to be patient and trust him. But just know that when we give, we shouldn't be giving so that way we can be blessed in a bunch of ways. We should be giving out of our hearts to the Lord for the simple fact that Jesus came for us and that he has saved us, right? Because us who have asked Jesus in our hearts, we have now been saved from hell. We have been saved from our sin and we have now been made God's child. That is the greatest blessing we will ever receive and it's more than enough. So may I encourage you to give out of your hearts out of thanksgiving and praise to God for what he has done in you when you ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. And if you have never asked Jesus in your heart, if you can't remember a time that you got on your hands and knees, or maybe you were in a chair or with your mom, if there's just a time that you, you just don't remember a time where you've asked Jesus in your heart, if you're not for sure that heaven is your home, then you can simply, all, Jesus already paid the price for your sins. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then Romans, we also know that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, with the mouth confession is made and, um, and believing in your heart, okay, that God hath raised him from the dead. And it also says, thou shalt be saved. Um, and so just, and that's in Romans, in Romans chapter 10. And you guys can read that in your own time. Open up your Bibles and read that. Okay, it makes it really clear the importance of spreading the gospel so that way people can hear. Because we have to hear the gospel in order to receive the gospel. Correct? Correct. And so, but if you've never asked Jesus in your heart, then may I encourage you right now, if you believe that you're a sinner, that you've done wrongdoings, that you've disobeyed God's word, maybe you've lied, maybe you've cheated on something, maybe you disobeyed your parents, okay, or had a bad attitude when they asked you to do something, whatever it may be, we are all born sinners. And that's why God sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to, to be born of, of, of a virgin, of a woman, and to, be, to live among us. And then to die on the cross for us, to pay the perfect sacrifice. He shed his blood on Calvary for you and for me. And that was what was needed to happen in order for the sins of the whole world to, to be forgiven. And so Jesus made the way when he said, it is finished. And Jesus was buried in a tomb. And three days later, he rose. He bodily rose from the grave. He walked out of that tomb. People got to be eyewitnesses. They got to touch him, his hands, where they pierced the nails into his hands, and he ate with them. And then he ascended up to, into heaven, and he's coming back real soon, and we need to be faithful, laboring for him. But if you believe that, if you believe that Jesus did that for you, that God sent Jesus for you, if you believe that all you have to do is just understand that you're a sinner before God, that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and believe that Jesus can save you and all you have to do is call out to him. And you can say a prayer like this that I'm about to say or you can say your own prayer to God. But just ask him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. So that you can say a prayer like this if you'd like but just mean it from your heart. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord God, I believe and know that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. Lord God, I ask you to save me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and wash my sins away. Thank you for saving me. Help me not to doubt, and help me not to be ashamed. And all these things I ask. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And God says, 
whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's with the calling and with your heart, just believing in your heart and calling upon him. If you have asked Jesus in your heart, if you just now asked Jesus in your heart and you know he's there, please comment or please email pastor or call our church. Let us know and we'd love to get a Bible to you and to help you with the next steps in your walk with God. But let me tell you, when you ask Jesus in your heart, you have now been born again. That moment you receive Christ and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you and you are now God's child, you are now sealed, and nothing and nobody could ever take away your salvation. You are now sealed, you are saved, you are God's child, and nothing will ever change that. And what a wonderful blessing that is. So don't doubt it, don't be scared, but trust the Lord and know that He is with you now. What a wonderful, wonderful moment that is when we ask Jesus in our heart. I was 11 years old when I came to know Christ, when I asked Jesus into my heart. And all oh, the joy that filled my soul, knowing that I was God's child. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll finish up. Do not forget to click the link below for your devotional books for the week. We have Monday all the way through Sunday. And so make sure to read those every day. Miss Justina takes the time to write those out. And I would greatly appreciate it if you would read those every day and have that time with the Lord. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray, pray Lord, and ask that you bless these kids, Jesus. I pray that you bless this um, video. I pray, Lord, that it would get out to other people and that we'd see other children get saved through this video, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you just um, strengthen the kids' hearts, strengthen their faith, help them to be faithful to watch the videos, to be faithful to spend time with you every day. And Lord, I just pray you bless the families that watch this, and I pray that they would be uplifted and encouraged as well. And help us, Lord, to spread the gospel, to be faithful, Lord Jesus, at your coming. Help us to not be ashamed, Jesus, when you come um, through the sky and take us up, Jesus, into heaven. I pray that we would be faithful, Lord Jesus, and serving you. And I just thank you for this day, and I pray, Lord, you be glorified through all that's said and done through these children. Please, Lord God, use them for your honor and glory. Help us to be faithful laborers in the harvest. And all these things I ask in Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say it. Amen. Okay, guys, I will see you next time. Do not forget to, watch, to do your devotional books, okay? Love you all.